Good evening. Today I'll be speaking on CT imaging of gas resistant tract volvulus. Volvulus presents with acute and recurrent abdominal symptoms. Uh, and volvulus is relatively difficult to diagnose clinically uh, because of its non specific presentation. And uh, radiology and radiological imaging plays a vital role in its diagnosis. Uh, 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 and also, a prompt diagnosis and early diagnosis is required in order to avoid the uh, complication, uh, the main complication being the ischemic injury to the bowel and infarction. Uh, uh, a conventional radiograph like, uh, uh, like the uh, plain x rays and uh, bearing procedures uh, uh, were initially the modality of choice. The, sequel, uh, the colonic volvulus have a typical uh, present imaging appearance on conventional radiographs, unlike the uh, volvulus modeling the other part of the body. Uh, uh, that's why a CT uh, plays a uh, vital role uh, in giving a definite diagnosis and also in uh, uh, its ability to pick up the complication, the main being the uh, bowel ischemia and uh, uh, infarction. So uh, it is important for radiologists to be familiar with the various appearance of the uh, volvulus involving all throughout the gastric uh, J tract. So the objective of my presentation is to uh, uh, to recognize the CT findings of gastrointestinal tract volvulus and its complication. Most of the cases uh, used in the presentation are referred from the emergency department of tele radiology solution international tele radiology practice. Uh, all all presented with symptoms of bowel obstruction. So. Uh, in the course of the presentation, we'll try to answer the following questions. How to identify the volvulus? What are the important signs to help us in identifying the volvulus? What are the signs, uh, what are the sites involved and what are the various patterns or uh, types of volvulus involved in that particular or specific site? And uh, uh, what are the findings of ischemia, uh, the main complication in volvulus? Identification of the volvulus. The gastric volvulus is identified by looking at abnormally located dilated stomach and its orientation. There are mainly two types: the organoaxial and mesenteroaxial type. The diagnostic criteria for small and large bowel volvulus is uh, by looking for an abrupt transition between a normal and a dilated bowel, combined with convergence of the two ends of dilated groups towards a fulcrum point, creating a closed loop obstruction. The signs, important signs, which will help us in picking up the volvulus is a well sign and a beak sign. Now, what is the well sign? Well sign is a Whirlpool pattern of concentric structures, including the twisted intestinal loops, vessels, and mesenteric fat. And this is a case of cecal volvulus. You have a large dilated bowel loop, and at the base of the volvulus, you see a, a, a whirl sign or a swirling of the mesenteric vessels and the bowel. The next sign, which, will, which is helpful, is the beak sign. Beak sign, what we see is a beak like appearance of the bowel at the site of transition, and there will be no progression of contrast beyond the obstruction site. So this is a case of uh, cecal volvulus. This is the rectum and at the site of trans, uh, uh, obstruction of the volvulus there is beaking, beaking of the bowel. So these two signs uh, help us in uh, uh, picking up the volvulus in addition to the uh, appearance of the bowel on eating. The One of the main complication or most important complication is ischemia or uh, ischemic injury to the bowel. So there are various imaging appearance of ischemia. Uh, 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 the most specific sign or most specific appearance is lack of wall enhancement or asymmetrical or delayed wall enhancement. The other, find, other uh, uh, findings which we can see on CT is thickening and increased accumulation of the bowel, a halo or a target sign, nematosis intestinalis, portal venous gas, and localized fluid or, fluid or hemorrhage in the The combination of the signs increases the specificity of uh, 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 diagnosing the presence of mesenteric injury. Among all, the most specific sign, as I've already told, is lack or asymmetrical or delayed enhancement of the bowel wall involved in the volvulus. So let, let us go through uh, some illustrations, uh, starting off with gastric volvulus. Now, gastric volvulus are classified as the organoaxial and mesenteroaxial volvulus based on the axis uh, uh, along which the stomach rotates. And you have a combined variety where you have a mixture of both organoaxial and mesenteric axial variety, uh, 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 or it's a complex volvulus. Organoaxial volvulus. Uh, in organoaxial volvulus, the stomach rotates along its long axis, 
that is that uh, the axis that connects the gastroesophageal junction and the pylorus. So this is the long axis stomach and stomach rotates around the long axis while the stomach is inverted with a greater curvature going above the lesser curvature and the stomach is transversely oriented. Whereas uh, in a mesentrico axial valvulus, the stomach twists along its short axis. So this is a short axis uh, that bisects the lesser and greater curvature of the stomach. So uh, in an uh, organoaxial valvulus, the, the lesser uh, greater curvature is displaced above the lesser curvature and the stomach has an horizontal orientation or a transverse orientation. Whereas in an uh, uh, mesentrico axial valvulus, the antrum is displaced above the gastroesophageal junction and stomach has a vertical orientation. The organoaxial valvulus is uh, usually associated with a diaphragmatic defect which may be post-traumatic or a paraesophageal hernia. This association is usually not seen in case of mesentrico axial valvulus. When we have a combination of both, it is a combined valvulus. So let's go, uh, go to the first illustration. It's a 12-year-old female who presented with severe abdominal pain and distension. So, uh, so uh, uh, there's a uh, um, so uh, what do we see is on this coronal image we see a, a vertically oriented stomach, vertically oriented and distended stomach, uh, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, um, gastric antrum is on top, and the, uh, this is the marking of a gastroduodenal junction. Okay, let's let's see this uh, cine loop. So we have a dilated uh, uh, portion of the stomach which is uh, 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 displacing or pushing the uh, um, left dome of the aphrom. So this is the esophagus and this is the uh, antrum of the stomach as we trace down. So this is the gastroduodenal junction and uh, this is the uh, esophagus. We have not still reached the gastroesophageal junction, gastroduodenal junction. As we go down, we reach the, uh, we get the duodenum uh, uh, and we have not still reached the gastro uh, esophageal junction. So this is the twisting, where there's twisting of the stomach. And as we go down, this is the body of the stomach and this is the fundus of the stomach and this is the gastroesophageal junction. So the gastroesophageal junction is uh, below the gastroduodenal junction and the stomach has a vertical orientation. What also we see in addition is the spleen which is present on the right side below the uh, uh, liver. So this is the spleen and this is the fundus of the stomach. So let's uh, let's see on the uh, coronal uh, images a vertically oriented stomach, the antrum is on top, this is the gastro uh, duodenal junction, the body and the fundus of the stomach is at the bottom and so is the gastroesophageal junction and this is the spleen. So, uh, 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 this is a case of mesentrico axial valvulus with a wandering spleen. Uh, 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 usually seen in uh, uh, children or a pediatric population and uh, wandering spleen is an association with uh, 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 gastric valvulus, mainly the mesentrico axial valvulus here. There is a, 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 a failure of the fixation, fixation of the spleen and the stomach to the retroperitoneum, which predisposes to uh, valvulus. Uh, uh, the valvulus usually presents with a, 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 a triad, which may be seen in uh, some of the cases called as a uh, brochured uh, triad. Th uh, this is in case of a gastric valvulus. The uh, triad of symptoms are epigastric pain. Uh, uh, irresistible or intractable retching and uh, uh, inability to pass the nasogastric acid. So this is a case of uh, mesentrico axial valvulus with a wa wandering spleen. So let's go to the next illustration. It's a 55 year old female who presented with epigastric pain and retching. So on this image, what do we see is a, 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 a large hiatal hernia or a paraesophageal hernia, uh, uh, which, is, uh, which is filled with a distended. Uh, with intrathoracic herniation of a stomach, which is distended, and the stomach is uh, transversely oriented. So this is the antrum of the stomach. So let's see the cine uh, images. This is the antrum of the stomach. This is the body of the stomach, and 
this is the gastroesophageal junction. As we trace down, this is the gastroesophageal junction, and this is the uh, uh, fundus of the stomach, which is below the below the dome of the diaphragm, and this is the gastroduodenal junction. This is the gastroduodenal junction. So uh, the stomach is distended and demonstrates a, a fluid level. So uh, this is a uh, uh, what do we see is a large uh, uh, paraesophageal hernia with uh, uh, transversely oriented stomach and dilated stomach. So this is a case of organoaxial valves with obstruction. Okay, uh, the next illustration, a 92 year old female who presented with vomiting, chest pain and history of hiatal hernia. So what do we see? We see a large hiatal hernia which is uh, uh, which contains a dilated uh, stomach. So this is the pylorus of the stomach, this is the uh, distal esophagus. Now on, on the coronal image the stomach has, on this image has a uh, vertical orientation. So this is the uh, 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 diaphragmatic hiatus through which uh, the part of the stomach is herniating into the uh, thoracic cavity. Let's let's see the same images. This is the pylorus of the stomach. This 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 is where we see the twist twist in the stomach. This is a, a, the a body body and a, this is the antrum and the pylorus of the stomach and this is the esophagus. So as we come down, the uh, uh, fundus of the stomach is in uh, this uh, subdiaphragmatic region. This is the fundus of the stomach. This is the uh, uh, gastroesophageal junction, and this is the gastroduodenal junction. So uh, the coronal images. So, uh, so this is uh, the body of the stomach. This is the fundus of the stomach, and this is the antrum of the stomach. So uh, the fundus the body and the antrum and it's twisted and this is the pylorus of the stomach. This is where there's the twisting of the stomach. So this is the esophagus, this is the pylorus, the body, the antrum and the fundus of the stomach. So uh, the uh, through the large hiatus, this is the hiatus of the diaphragm. So, uh, this is a case of uh, uh, combined valvulus or a mixed uh, uh, organoaxial and mesenteric axial valvulus in a patient who has a uh, large uh, paraesophageal or a hiatal hernia. Okay, uh, next illustration, a 22 year old female, who, uh, female patient who presented with breathlessness and uh, um, drainage of ingested food through the chest tube which is placed for a large hydronemothorax which was diagnosed on radiograph. So, patient had a, a presented with breathlessness, a chest radiograph was done and uh, uh, and was diagnosed to have a large hydronemothorax and a chest tube was uh, placed and they saw uh, 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 food particles draining through the test tube, chest tube and then a CT was advised. So, what do we see? We see a large uh, uh, intrathoracic, uh, intrathoracic herniation of the stomach and uh, uh, contralateral shift of the mediastinum and here we see the chest tube which is uh, piercing through the uh, 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 stomach wall and is placed within the stomach. So this is the coronal image. We see uh, the stomach is distended and completely occupying the left hemithorax. Uh, contralateral shift to the mediastinum. Uh, it, uh, it is a vertical oriented stomach with the antrum on top, the gastroesophageal junction down below the level of the gastroduodenal junction. So let's see the same images. So uh, the antrum of the stomach, which is uh, uh, reaching up to the uh, uh, apex of the hemithorax. On the left side, uh, so this is where we see the chest tube, which is uh, tip is within the distended stomach. So this is the uh, contrast filled distended esophagus. So this is the chest tube, and this is the spleen, which is uh, uh, displaced and it is uh, uh, along in the paravertebral region. So uh, as we come down, so uh, this is the gastro duodenal junction. And this is the esophagus. We are yet to reach the gastroesophageal junction. 
and this is the gastroesophageal junction and the fundus this is the fundus of the stomach the fundus of the stomach is down and the stomach is vertically oriented so let's see the coronal images again re demonstrating the same findings a vertically oriented stomach with the antrum on top and uh, the uh, gastroesophageal junction below the gastro uh, duodenal junction and this is the spleen which is located in the uh, 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 paravertebral region the uh, the uh, 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 diaphragm is not well visualized, so it was uh, it was not clear whether it was a la uh, it was an eventration of the diaphragm or a, uh, a, a, um, a large diaphragmatic defect. Um, there is a, a contralateral mediastinal shift. So uh, this is a case of uh, uh, a mesenteric axial valvulus with uh, a chest tube which, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, piercing into the stomach and a tip within the distended stomach. So coming to the small bowel valvulus, the small bowel valvulus, the types are it can be a primary small bowel valvulus or a secondary small bowel valvulus. The primary small bowel valvulus, there is no anatomical etiological factor, whereas in a secondary valvulus, there is an acquired or a congenital predisposing factor such as a band, uh, adhesion, malrotation, Meckel's diverticulum, internal hernia, and is seen in association with pregnancy. The primary uh, uh, small bowel valvulus is more common in children and uh, 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 young uh, uh, adults, whereas the secondary the small bowel valvulus is common in the elderly. So uh, the cause of the primary uh, small bowel valvulus, or uh, it's frequently seen in certain geographical areas, uh, and is seen in relation to certain factors such as the low socio-economic status, uh, uh, high fiber diet, or high uh, 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 or prolonged fasting, some uh, <clears throat> parasite infestation, or diabetic autonomous, uh, diabetic autonomous neuropathy. Uh, so uh, let's go to the illustration. This is a 52-year-old male who presented with abdominal distension, severe abdominal pain, and vomiting. What do we see? We see dilated uh, 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 small bowel loops. There is a uh, uh, mesenteric edema and congestion, and some bowel wall thickening. Let's see the CT image. What do we see? Is the, the dilated bowel loops, and at the base of it, there is swelling of the mesentery. With co converging of all the mesenteric vessels at that point of swelling, and there's a lot of mesenteric edema, mesenteric congestion, and bowel wall thickening. So this is a case of uh, uh, small bowel valvulus uh, with findings suggestive of ischemic injury to the bowel. The, uh, the findings which suggest ischemic injury are the mesenteric edema and congestion. And presence of bowel wall thickening. Uh, a large bowel valvulus, unlike the valvulus in other parts of the uh, gastrointestinal tract, the large bowel valvulus, the uh, uh, imaging features on conventional radiography is uh, classic and most of the time diagnostic. Uh, the uh, CT plays an important role in uh, uh, picking up the complications in these uh, patients. So uh, the common sites of valvulus in the large bowel are. Sigmoid colon, followed by uh, cecal valvulus, and uh, rarer type of valvulus are the valvulus known as the transverse colon. The most common being the sigmoid valvulus. The cecal valvulus. Uh, there are uh, uh, two types of uh, uh, cecal valvulus. Uh, in one type, the dilated cecum is occupying the right lower quadrant. So this is the illustration. See, here, what we see is the cecum twists in in uh, in the axial plane, rotating clock uh, or anticlockwise, and along the long axis of the bowel. So there is the uh, twisting of the cecum along the long axis, along its long axis, and it occupies the right lower quadrant. And the second type, this is the illustration where the dilated cecum occupies the left upper quadrant. Here, in addition to the twisting, uh, which is seen in the first type, there is uh, the dilated uh, cecum also inverts. So uh, the cecum is twisted along its long axis and then inwards. This is uh, also called as a loop type of uh, cecal valvulus. Here, the dilated cecum occupies the left upper quadrant. Predisposing factor for cecal valvulus are abnormal fixation of motility of the cecum, and are also seen in uh, 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 with increased incidence in pregnancy and following colonoscopy. So, uh, so. Uh, uh, Let's see uh, a few illustrations. This is a, 
a 53 year old female who presented with abdominal distension and vomiting so uh, what do we see uh, is a, a dilated uh, large bowel which is uh, 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 reaching up to the uh, 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 upper abdomen there is a inversion of the superior mesenteric artery and superior mesenteric vein relationship on the coronal image we see this large dilated bowel loop which is occupying the uh, 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 reaching up to the left upper abdomen and occupying the whole of the mid and uh, right lower abdomen and at its base there is swelling of bowel loops so let's see the uh, cine images so there is inversion of the relation of superior mesenteric artery and superior mesenteric vein uh, this is a dilated large bowel which is uh, reaching up to the left upper quadrant so uh, uh, here what do we see is the small bowel loops are predominantly seen in the right uh, 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 right side of the abdomen so this is this is the point of transition which uh, uh, of the dilated large bowel uh, uh, the distal point of transition of the dilated large, large bowel which uh, uh, has a beaked appearance and this is the site of swelling and the uh, proximal uh, uh, and this is the, uh, this is the terminal ileum which is uh, 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 which is uh, uh, collapsed and also involved in the twist so the uh, proximal site of uh, transition is the region of the terminal ileum and the distal site of transition is this uh, 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 region of the uh, large bowl which is seen as peaking so this is the swirl or a twist this is the ileocecal junction and this is the dilated c command Uh, uh the adjacent uh, um, uh, 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 ascending colon so let's see the uh, uh, coronal so dilated large bowl this is the uh, site of mesenteric twist so uh, unlike the uh, 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 here here it's a case of uh, uh, cecal valvulus which is uh, associated with bowel mal uh, mal rotation of the bowel so unlike the uh, 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 usual cecal valvulus here in addition to the cecum the uh, part of the ascending colon was, was also involved in the valvulus so this is a, a, a case of large bowel valvulus which involves the cecum and a part of ascending colon in a patient who has bowel malrotation so going to the next illustration this is a 75 year old female who presents presented with uh, pain abdomen and abdominal distension we see a dilated cecum which is a uh, reaching up to the uh, left upper quadrant in addition what do we see is a intramural air a tiny air lock air also seen within the mesenteric veins the coronal image is uh, uh, demonstrating the uh, uh, typical appearance of the cecal valvulus with the dilated cecum occupying uh, uh, the uh, uh, left upper quadrant this is a mesenteric swelling the uh, redemonstration of the same findings the mesenteric swelling and dilated cecum intramural air so this is a case of cecal valvulus with a complication of uh, uh, bowel ischemia and uh, the uh, findings suggesting bowel ischemia are intramural air mesenteric air portal venous air and mesenteric condition so this is a cecal valvulus with a complication of mesenteric uh, 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 ischemic injury to the bowel sigmoid valvulus sigmoid valvulus is Uh, the most common uh, type of valvulus in the large bowel and sigmoid valvulus is actually a most common uh, uh, cause uh, after uh, diabetic colitis and uh, diabetic colitis uh, uh, for cause of uh, uh, obstruction in the large bowel so there are two types the mesenteric axial type and the organo axial type uh, 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 the uh, okay the mesenteric axial type it presents as a closed loop obstruction whereas the organo axial type there is no closed loop obstruction so uh, in mesenteric axial type the bowel twists around the mesenteric axis so both the uh, 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 segments or both the junctions that is the recto sigmoid junction and the descending colon and sigmoid junction are involved in the twist leading to a closed loop obstruction uh, uh, and uh, a mesenteric axial type of valvulus whereas Uh, in organ axis there is only uh, one uh, um, uh, loop uh, that is involved in the twist that is the recto sigmoid junction which is involved in the twist whereas the other uh, uh, loop of the sigmoid colon is not involved in the twist twist and uh, the sigmoid valvulus is uh, usually associated with chronic constipation uh, uh, and colonic reden redundancy or a in a uh, hospitalized or in institutionalized patients 
So let's see the uh, uh, illustration. So this is a sigmoid, a redundant sigmoid colon. You have a recto sigmoid junction and a descending colon and sigmoid junction. So when the bowel rotates along the long axis of the sigmoid colon with uh, involving only the recto sigmoid limb in the twist and not involving the other limb, so this is a uh, uh, organoaxial type of sigmoid bowel. And when both the limbs are involved in the twist, where in this case the uh, axis of rotation is in uh, this plane, then this is a, a, a mesentrical axial valvulus. This mesentrical axial valvulus is a closed loop obstruction with narrowing of uh, narrowing uh, at two points which are converging. Uh, 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 narrowing of the bowel loop at two points which uh, converge at a point or uh, at a fulcrum. So, uh, so this is a mesentrical axial valvulus. This is an organoaxial type of sigmoid valvulus. So let's see some illustration. This is a 70 year old male who presents with abdominal distension and pain. So uh, what do we see? Uh, we see uh, swelling of the bowel uh, loops. This is a big appearance of the bowel at the site of transition. The coronal image again demonstrating the swelling. Now let's see the cine images. The dilated sigmoid colon which is reaching up to the left, uh, right upper quadrant. So this, these are the two limbs of the sigmoid colon. Dilated sigmoid colon. So this is the uh, descending colon. As we go down, uh, so this is the uh, 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 point of uh, valvulus where there is swelling of the bowel loops. This is the uh, uh, transition uh, of the dilated sigmoid colon. This is the uh, uh, proximal site of transition. Uh, sorry, this is the distal site of transition. That is the uh, recto sigmoid junction where there is beaking of the bowel, uh, bowel loops, beaking of the uh, limb. So this is the twist. Uh, this is other uh, other uh, uh, limb of the bowel which is uh, involved in the uh, valvulus, and this is the collapsed tractor. This is the collapsed tractor. So uh, we'll see it on the coronal image. So uh, dilated uh, 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 sigmoid colon which is uh, reaching up to the right upper quadrant. This is the site of transition uh, with uh, swelling of the bowel loops. And uh, what do we see is both the bowel loops are involved in the twist. So this is a type of, this is a mesentrical axial type of uh, sigmoid valvulus. Yeah, both the bowel loops are involved in the uh, uh, twist. I, uh, or both the limbs are involved in the twist. So this is a mesentrical axial type of sigmoid valvulus. So let's. The next illustration, so it's an elderly female who presented with abdominal distension and pain. We see a dilated uh, 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 sigmoid colon and there's a beaking uh, of the uh, bowel at the site of transition. So let's see the same images. So uh, dilated uh, uh, sigmoid colon, which is reaching up to the right upper quadrant. So as we come down, we see uh, uh, the site of transition, the twist. We see there is twisting or beaking of the uh, 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 one limb of the sigmoid colon. So this is the uh, recto sigmoid uh, limb with the uh, beaking at the uh, uh, recto sigmoid junction. The uh, uh, rectum is collapsed. This is the descending colon and this is the uh, uh, second limb of the sigmoid colon. And what do we see? There is no transition, there is no beaking and this is not involved in the twist. This is the collapsed rectum. I'm playing the cine loop again. There's only one limb that is involved in the twist. That is the uh, uh, twist is at the recto sigmoid junction. The other limb is not involved in the twist. So this is a case of organoaxial type of sigmoid valvulus. So uh, in conclusion, valvulus is the clinically relevant cause for acute or recurrent abdominal pain with non-specific clinical symptoms and and is rarely diagnosed clinically. So the prompt diagnosis of valvulus is essential to avoid complications like ball ischemia and infarctions. CT with multiplanar reformat is the imaging modulator of the choice because uh, 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 of its ability to uh, uh, give a confirmatory diagnosis and also to pick up uh, 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 the complications. 
and it is thus familiar. Familiarization. So it is important to be familiar with the various imaging appearance of valves on CT. So uh, the points to remember are: look for abnormal location or orientation of the bowel with dilatation and whirl sign to diagnose valvulus. The swelling of the bowel and its mesentery is called as the whirl sign, uh, and it is seen at the site of valvulus. And paraesophageal hernia is a predominant uh, predisposing factor for organoaxial gastric valvulus in adults, uh, where the greater curvature is displaced superiorly and lesser curvature is located caudally. In mesenteric axial valvulus uh, of the stomach, the antrum is displaced above the gastroesophageal junction and is usually not associated with diaphragmatic defect. And chronic constipation and redundant sigmoid colon predisposed to sigmoid valvulus. So, uh, as in gastric valvulus, the sigmoid valvulus are also of two types, being the organoaxial and uh, mesentricoaxial valvulus. Uh, that's it, and uh, I'm open for questions. Uh, if there are no questions, then uh, I uh, thank you all for uh, attending the presentation and patiently listening to my talk. Thank you. Huh, it's stopped recording, right? Eh?